I think by far one of India's greatest exports has to be yoga and meditation. And actually is something quite contemporary if you look at this uh, as, as, as being a global phenomenon. As an osteopath, when I was training as an undergraduate and then in the early days of my clinical practice, so going up to around sort of 2008, I would tell patients, you know, you have this issue, you have this back pain, this shoulder ache and all this, you know, what's really good for you is to do some yoga. And they're like, what? Are you serious? What, what exactly is yoga? Can you imagine that? Can you even imagine meeting someone on the street and them not having an idea of what yoga is? But I kid you not, it was not so long ago that it was not as mainstream as it is today. Now, what I've seen in the art of living, which has really been an incredible inspiration to me when it comes to yoga and meditation, is the incredible transformation that happens in people's lives. How does this transformation happen? How do people become happier? I think dissecting how yoga and meditation makes for a happier and healthier society is, is needless to say. Most of us know, it's all out there. But <clears throat> how is it really transforming society is it, it, truly inspirational. You know, when one meditates, when one practices yoga, you will notice a physiological change you'll notice that your emotional being has direction. You will notice intellectual stimulation. How does this culminate in a transformation in somebody's life, a positive one? Through observation, perception and expression. So one who meditates, one who uh, practices yoga has a keen sense of observation, can even transcend the intellect and tap into deeper faculties of their being, be it their intuition, the gut feel. You know, in the art of living, we're training children to tap into their intuition by blindfolding them and giving them meditation techniques. They're able to take cards, put their hands on it and read what's written on the card and tell you what's on there. It's phenomenal. But we all have this innate ability. But education, society, belief systems, whatever it is, generally stress and anxiety, remove these faculties from us. So there's a new wave coming about in the educational system which will utilise intuition. Mark my words, it's coming. Back to observation. So observation, perception, your ability to decode what you're seeing, to, to, to perceive what people are saying to you, the information, the facts, the data around you and utilize it for the betterment of the situation that you're in. And perhaps, above all, expression. When your expression becomes refined, when you're speaking more with your presence than your words, you're communicating so much more. Again, Guru Dev Sri Sri Ravishankar often says, when you get off a plane, the air stewardess looks at you and says, have a nice day, but she doesn't mean it. You know. When a dog comes up to you in the street, or if you have a dog at home and it sees you after a few hours, it's looking at you, big eyes wagging its tail, it doesn't have to say a word, but you know exactly how it feels. So we communicate more with our presence, but we are not doing anything necessarily to cleanse our presence, but through the practice of yoga and meditation, through the appreciation of these Vedic sciences, such as that Ayurveda and Vedic astrology and others bring to us, we get to know so much more about ourselves. So, again, how are you creating this transformation in your life? By the refining your observation, by refining your perception, and by refining your expression, how can your outcome not be going in your way better than it is already? Do you see my point?